the single flap approach represents a simplified procedure that allows to surgically access intrabony periodontal defects by raising a single vestibular full thickness flap, either buccal or lingual, depending on the defect extension. The procedure in this video is performed to regenerate an intrabony defect between the lateral incisor and the cuspid in the lower jaw. Careful bone sounding is carried out to diagnose the extension of the defect, which for this particular defect extends to the buccal and lingual area. The flap design is based on an intrasulcular incision following the buccal gingival margin and a butt joint incision at the base of the papilla at the site of the intrabony defect. The mesiodistal extension of the incision is determined by the ability to access the defect to perform an accurate root and defect debridement. Here, the flap is extended mesially and distally by an intrasulcular incision along with a beveled incision of the papilla on the adjacent teeth. Due to the buccal extension of the defect, a full thickness flap is raised on the buccal aspect only. This ensures proper surgical access to the root surface defect. The granulation tissue is removed from the defect by means of a small periodontal Hirschfeld file. The file should only be used to remove the granulation tissue, but not to scale the root surface. The Hirschfeld file is also used to decorticalize the internal part of the intrabony defect in order to open the marrow spaces to facilitate the migration of mesenchymal stem cells from the bone marrow into the defect. The root surface is mechanically cleaned by an ultrasonic scaler. The defect appears as a one to two wall intraosseous non self containing defect. Here, a regenerative strategy based on Straumann endogain in combination with a bone substitute is chosen in order to enhance the regenerative outcome of the procedure. The conditioning of the root surface is carried out by applying Straumann Pref Gel, EDTA, for two minutes. After conditioning of the root surface, Straumann Pref Gel is removed by thoroughly irrigating the surgical area with sterile saline. A first layer of Straumann Emdogain is applied on the exposed, clean, and blood-free root surface by starting at the most apical bone level. A blood-free and clean root surface is important for the precipitation of amylogenins on the root surface. Therefore, controlling the bleeding and reaching an appropriate level of hemostasis is necessary. The intraosseous component of the defect is filled with bone substitute, premixed with Straumann endogain.
A second layer of Strauman endogain is applied on the exposed root surface and on top of the bone substitute that will be in contact with the soft tissues of the repositioned flap. Flap approximation is achieved by a first internal mattress suture placed in the buccal flap 5 mm apically to the incision which displaces the flap at its original position. A second internal mattress suture is placed more coronally in order to ensure wound closure and primary intention healing of the flaps. Further interrupted or internal mattress sutures are used to close the adjacent areas of the defect. Sutures are left in place for 14 days. Chlorhexidine regimen is maintained for four weeks. Any trauma to the interproximal papilla by brushing should be avoided. The patient has to be enrolled in a stringent maintenance regimen.